now we want to talk about um, the problem of how does the cell know where the introns are? In other words, how does it know where to splice? And in this sense, uh, a cell is, faces very much the same problem as a film director, director who has uh, shot thousands of hours of film and yet, and, and now is overwhelmed with, with uh, film and needs to then make a final movie. And so with, traditionally with film, before the digital age, uh, the film director would go through the film frame by frame, find exactly the place where uh, he or she wanted to make a cut, and then there would be a splicing machine that would literally cut and splice the film back together to make the, the final version of, of the movie. And in cells, that's exactly what happens because, of course, introns are made up of individual nucleotides, and the nucleotides are very much like the individual frames um, in, in a film. So introns have the following structure. The 5' end, or the beginning of the intron, is sometimes, many times called a splice donor, but splicers tend to call it the 5' splice site. And it, uh, in 99% of genes, is uh, signified by a GT as the first two nucleotides of the intron. And then um, much further downstream, actually close to the, the other end of the intron, is an adenosine called the branch site. And we'll be talking about what that branch site does in, in part two of my lecture. Uh, and then at the very end of the intron is the AG, which is the last two nucleotides of the intron at the three prime splice site or the splice acceptor. Now I've told you that some introns are up to 400,000 nucleotides long and certainly th this amount of information content is not enough to, to even um, signify a small intron. So there must be additional uh, sequences. And so in addition to these, these universally conserved nucleotides, there are consensus sequences in uh, all of the introns. And so here are the consensus sequences for budding yeast. And these are, these, um, are called logos, motif logos. And uh, the height of the letter tells you how conserved that site is. So for example, here you can see the GT at the 5' splice site. And so there, in addition to the GT, there are several other nucleotides that are highly conserved and few, a few that are, are less conserved. At the branch site in yeast, there is a uh, very highly conserved TAC, TAAC sequence. And then upstream of the 3' splice site, there's not too much conservation until you get right to the 3' splice site. So there's additional information in these so-called consensus sequences. Uh, surprisingly, in humans, so if you remember, yeast only have about 250 introns, and they generally are short. They're all less than a couple of hundred nucleotides, whereas human introns are much, much longer. And the surprise, but the surprising thing is, is that the human consensus sequences are less conserved. So you can already see that because you can just see that there are lots more letters down here than there are up here, particularly for the branch site, much less conservation. And then for the three prime splice set, there's a little more information because there's this so-called pyrimidine track here that, that is um, a bunch of C's and T's upstream of the, of the AG.